answer is yes. Uh, there are about 2.8 million adults uh, per year that die from being overweight or obese globally. And indeed, being overweight and obese is the fifth risk for global death. Most of this burden really comes from the diabetes that's out there, from ischemic heart disease associated with being overweight and obese, and of course, the increased risk of cancer associated with being obese. There is a study called the Framingham Heart Study, and this shows that if you are obese and a non-smoker, women lose seven years of life, and men lose about six years of life. But if you're obese and a smoker, both women and men lose at least 13 years of life. That's quite significant. So obesity can virtually affect every organ of your body. Um, we can try and, and uh, look at the complications of obesity uh, by splitting them up into three sections. So metabolic, mechanical, and mental. So if we start with the metabolic complications first, Obesity is associated, of course, with uh, a very high risk of type 2 diabetes, which leads to a real disease burden. Obesity increases your risk of cardiovascular disease, including uh, coronary artery disease, the risk of strokes, the risk of heart attacks, um, you know, uh, dyslipidemia, that's abnormalities with cholesterol, and increased risk of heart failure. Obesity is associated with an increased risk of gallstones, fatty liver, which can progress to fibrosis and cirrhosis, and of course, may then lead to the need for liver transplants. Currently, alcoholic liver disease is the major uh, cause for liver transplants, but obesity, fatty liver disease, and progression of that is set to be probably the most common cause for a liver transplant in years to come. Obesity also affects respiratory disease, so we see a increased rates of obstructive sleep apnea in our patient population, also exacerbation of asthma. Uh, moving on um, to other metabolic problems, of course, the increased risk of cancer is also increased in our population. This increases um, risk of cancer such as breast cancers, colorectal, endometrial, ovarian, pancreatic cancers, amongst many others. If we then move on to the mechanical complications of obesity, of course, we know that an increased weight is associated with problems with lower back pain and osteoarthritis. And then finally, thinking about mental disease, which of course is a really, really important part of this sort of triad of complications, we know that many of our patients with obesity have depression and anxiety. And of course, this burden of disease really needs to be tackled uh, and sometimes it's very much ignored you know, when we manage our patients. There are many options available for weight loss, but the cornerstone of all these options, of course, is lifestyle interventions. So dietary changes and increased exercise within um, our lifestyles. But for some patients, lifestyle alone is not enough. And then we have to look to other options, including pharmacotherapy, and bariatric surgery. So pharmacotherapy can be very useful in achieving weight loss and we do have a variety of agents that we can choose from. Some of these mimic some of our natural hormones, our satiety hormones that speak to our brain to say that we're full. And these interventions can be effective in achieving and maintaining weight loss. Moving on from um, pharmacotherapy, there are some endoscopic options such as the gastric balloon and the endobarrier which are endoscopically placed into our gut and again these have been found to be useful in maintaining uh, well, in achieving weight loss and maintaining weight loss although these procedures are temporary and once the device is removed then the satiety signal is removed and not sustained <clears throat> finally we have bariatric surgery, which has been shown to be an effective way to both lose weight and maintain weight with time, with studies showing maintained weight loss up to 20 years and beyond. The three most common procedures worldwide are the gastric band, the sleeve gastrectomy, 
and the room Y gastric bypass. These procedures will require lifelong follow up, especially nutritional supplementation lifelong. And it is very important that if patients are considering bariatric surgery, which of course has been shown to be very successful in remission of many of the comorbidities that I've spoken about so far, that they are assessed by an obesity physician to discuss the pros and cons of surgery and whether it is suitable for them. Our bodies are designed in such a way as to preserve energy and defend us from times of famine. So when we lose weight through a diet, for example, our gut hormones change in such a way as to increase our hunger hormones, that's ghrelin, and to decrease our satiety hormones, and on balance, making us feel more hungry. And what's really interesting is that even one year after we finish our diet, our gut hormones still remember that we've lost calories and our hunger hormones remain high and our satiety hormones remain low. That is, they haven't gone back to baseline. Not only that, our basal metabolic rate after weight loss is lower. That is, the energy required for all our metabolic processes is less than it used to be. So, on balance, when we lose weight, because of the changes in the gut hormones, and the fact that we require less calories to maintain our basal metabolic processes means that it's that much harder to keep that weight loss off in time. <music>